Michelle Nicole here with Michelle. Again. Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Unicorn Spitz. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm super excited about today because, well, we're gonna start clear coating the top of my treasure chest. Um, what do I call it, the treasure beach chest. And that means that I'm like almost done. And I've been really being very strange with this piece. I have went through so many different changes with it, it's unbelievable. And I'm so ready to have it next to finished for sure. So um, if you look down at what we have going here, um, we have on the top of this is unicorn spits. Um, and then I did some Cricut stenciling and we haven't sealed it yet. So just vinyl still, um, stenciling right over. And then I wanted to make it look a little more aged. Now this is um, a copper prototype that I've been playing with, but I used midnight blackness to do this little kind of, I don't know what you would call this. What would you call this, babe? Aging? I Distressing? aged it. I wanted to look like the metal was scuffed so that it was old and scuffed. So I took a little midnight blackness and mixed it with my, um, with my copper staining glaze prototype and I made almost a bronze. And that's the same color that I used to do all the stenciling in. But with Unicorn Spit, you can do the same thing with all the colors, so it's no different. So today we're just going to go over the different sealers that you can use with Unicorn Spit and what gets you different results. I just scrolled by. Somebody said antiquing. I didn't, I didn't catch the antiquing? name. Antiquing? Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. You can totally see the brush strokes. I didn't try to flatter them any. I wanted it to look like something scraped it. And it, I think that I really, really got that pretty well. So we're going to look over some different options. For this piece, I don't want to use a high gloss because as you said, we're going for an antiquing look. Um, if you like waxes, go for it. I just feel unsteady about using waxes and cells on my tops especially when they're like, this is kind of thick. We didn't put it on real thin and let it absorb into the, into the wood because we had some nail holes to try to camouflage. So I put it on kind of thick, so I don't feel real confident about using a wax or a sealer to, to really lock it in. I want to use something stronger. Although on the base, that's what I use to lock the um, unicorn spit to the cleaned existing finish of the base. So another thing is you don't want to use good brushes whenever it comes to doing your clear coat because with Unicorn Spit, you cannot use a water-based product. So if you are going to use a good brush, make sure you have some mineral spirits or some thinner to keep your brushes nice. Um, it would be the same stuff you would use to clean out brushes that are for oil painting. For me, I just use cheap little throwaways just to keep things simple because it is important to use a non-water-based clear coat. Now, if you look on the can, like this one here, let me see if I can grab one for you real fast. Um, here we go. Polyacrylic is generally a very well-loved product that's on the market. Now, on polyacrylic, people like it because it dries clear in the whole nine yards, but they also really love the fact that this, it says, it cleans up easy with soap and water and can be recoated in only two hours. 
Now, if a product says cleans up easy with soap and water, it will take the water that's in it, it's water-based, and actually absorb into the unicorn spit and just spoil your whole design and smear it. That's why you have to use an oil base because it locks it down. Yeah, I don't know how many times we see people who have these just beautiful things that they've done, and they're like, what happened, what happened? Well, they yes. grabbed a water-based sealer and it ruined everything. It sucks, I feel so bad for them. Yes, and the same thing, a lot of people really want to use the triple thick by um, Rust-Oleum because it says that it's you get the equivalent of three coats in just one coat. That's fine, but it's water-based. Again, it cleans up easy with soap and water, so that means that you cannot use it with unicorn spit. Some people have found a way around it by first spray painting it with a clear to lock it down and then going over it with several coats, but still you're running a risk of maybe it just did it the spray paint didn't get on thick enough or even enough that it still will seep through it and it'll reactivate your design. So it's very important to be safe than sorry, especially when you're working on a very time consuming piece that you use a non water based sealer. And then we're gonna go over some of the ones that I've had great success with and I'm sure that there's others as well. But this is what I have on hand. All right, so. Let me see here. Doo, doo, doo. All right. One thing that I've always found was great was just fast drying polyurethane. It works great. I haven't had any problems other than one thing that I noticed a lot of people did have issues with is yellowing. So whenever it comes to whites, um, sometimes some of the blues might turn a little green. This does have a problem with yellowing. I'm not gonna lie, there's nothing you can do. And I'll show you an example right here. This here is a pro finisher. It's just a fast drying polyurethane as well. This one's for floors. But as you can see, this is a pretty white piece of wood for the, for the thing. Can they see that good? Enough, but if you pull it out, it gets a very amber tint to it. Now it's not super amber, but you have to remember as time goes by, it does get more and more yellow when the sun gets on it. This is a clear satin, and I don't think there's much of a difference in the amber colors than the satin versus the, um, the high gloss. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind when using a polyurethane is that you're gonna get some yellowing. Whenever, and that would be for interior. Now, if you're going to be using exterior, we found great results using the Halsman Spar Urethane. But again, if you just look at the ridges around here where it was stuck, you got a nice little amber color. But Halsman is what I prefer for exterior because it does have a UV protected. Just so you know, I'm, I got the zoomed in so people can see the product, not you. Okay, so just, is this the right just, spot? That you're fine. I just was wanting to let you know. Okay, thank you. So, Hellsman is what I've been using for exterior and recommending because it does have that exceptional protection from sunlight, rain and moisture, temperature changes. And this is a semi-gloss and this is the one that I've had good results with. The one that I did not have good results with is Thompson's Water Sealer Clear Multi-Surface. What I, it doesn't seem to really have very good um, protection for color. So I did a little bench in my front and the sun bleached it out. The red has disappeared where I used this, but it's still going strong where I use the Halsman's. So this is one I do not recommend. I do not recommend the Thompson's water seal. It didn't seem to hold up on concrete either. So that's something that I still need to work on and develop is how to, how to seal an exterior concrete piece. Have not figured that out yet. Have we had any questions? We sealed that exterior concrete piece in FAMO wood. That seems to work really well. That works great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that works wonderful. All right. Another thing a lot of people are, are um, thinking about is how unicorn spits these bold and you know, very striking, exciting colors. Um, one thing that people are doing to bring a more 
rustic and earth tone yet having color which is a completely new look without using a dark wax without using um, any type of, of um, agents like antiquing agents and things like that well this is pretty easy we've been using um, the um, this is early American but there's other colors out there of just um, these penetrating stains and sealer in one so it kind of works like a clear nail polish I think the stain and sealer in one kind of works with that's tinted however it does absorb into the unicorn spit and it gives it a real rich beautiful feel, um, real rich beautiful I don't know look yeah it makes it real rusticy and it, it takes the the pop of color and just tones it down it makes it more earth tone you can use an array of their colors but you know you want do one coat and if you're happy with it then you would continue on with a clear one because the more you add of these tinted stain of these tinted clear coats that they call penetrating stains um, the darker and richer it's going to get and you wouldn't want to go too overboard so definitely work on that. If you want to get some details on that, you can always look over at Color Wheel Creations. She's working on a project now that's done in Unicorn Spit where she's sealing with a walnut um, stain and sealer in one. So that's pretty interesting. So Sherry Combs Garnett is intimidated by the FAMO wood. Oh, yes. It is very easy to be intimidated by it. It is. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple of different ways to look at a glaze coat to me you know when I was working at home um, it was hard for me to make a mistake because I knew that if I made a mistake that set me back on making or set me back in time to make a profit and it also cost me more in product and whenever I was you know just working as hard as I could in the kitchen and then refinishing in the in the garage to make ends meet I needed something that was less likely to mess up and um, that's why I'm here today with Fama Wood I, out of 12 products and I kind of you know chartered my way through all the different ones and what I thought of them this is the one that gave me the least mistakes and we'll go over that here in just a minute um, another thing that I really have liked and a lot of people bring up to me quite often is oh tongue oil oh tongue oil um, tongue oil finish is different than regular tongue oil there's two different types this is the one i like it's by form bees and i think that the guy looks like paul newton isn't that his name newman the guy who makes the salad dressings <laughs> anyways but tongue oil is different than tongue oil finish tongue oil finish has a hardener in it that gives you like this um a real it's almost like a polyurethane it does give you like a polyurethane finish I think it's very um, easy to go on um, it doesn't have any fumes that I feel are really bad but you have to remember that it is combustible so just like polyurethane and some of your other products you want to make sure that you keep it away from sparks or an open flame and then you also want to make sure that you keep it out of your eyes and try to protect your skin as much as possible. And, you know, if you do have, if you're sensitive in your respiratory system, you're definitely going to want to wear um, a little mask, just like you would with any of the oil-based sealers that are out there, um, if, if you're highly sensitive to them. Um, of course, I'm crossing my fingers that we're going to have a zero VOC um, product coming out soon um, when it comes to glass this is what I really like to get that glass like finish on a piece of glass if you don't want a FAMA wood coat it and you're doing it say on the interior and the and your and the glass is showing the design in the front like I do my glass things I just spray it with some of this and also I like to finish when I do my wine glasses this is what I like to spray on my wine glasses this is Rust-Oleum lacquer. I always tell everyone, go get the one that has the little black um, bar stool on it. This is definitely my favorite of the sprays for a high shine on glass and on several different things you can use it on, but I find this is my go-to for glass. Um, another thing that you can use in order to um, 
steel fabric. A lot of people are asking me about fabric. I just made a post the other day about different ways of using heat, vinegar, different things like that. But if you're on clothing, however, if you're looking to do outdoor pillows or uh, outdoor rug or you know your umbrella over your um, patio furniture or your shoes, I prefer um, these sillers. You can find these all over the place. This one's called Never Wet. And I really like it a lot. And I find that if you get the one that's for automotive interiors, it doesn't have a bad smell. It actually just makes everything smell like a clean car. And I don't think that's bad at all. How are we doing, babe? I'm chasing an audio issue. Oh, boy. Are people able to hear me? Well, I thought it was your microphone. I, I, I think it's just my microphone. Is it's it your microphone? Well, here, I'll I move think this I got up it. a I think I got bit. it fixed now, though. Oh, good. All right. I think that's why I'm talking because I want to hear if I got it fixed. Okay, good. All right, so for this piece here, we are doing a more rustic look. So I don't want a real high gloss shine. Um, I would have a high gloss shine um, like you get with Fama Wood. Um, so we're going to be demonstrating that here in a minute. But if you look at this piece here, this is one of our galaxies done on a, on a little wood round. And it does, it looks like someone melted a piece of glass right over it. It's beautiful, it gives it a real three-dimensional look. It's absolutely gorgeous. And a lot of people always ask me, well, what do you do, Michelle, about the edges? Well, for me and the edges, I just let it spill right over the edge. And what you get in turn are these drops on the bottom of your piece. See how it kind of gets a drip? Are they able to see that at all, babe? More or less. All right, so you get these drips. All you do when it's done and dry, you just sand them right off for a nice clean finish. Show now, them again. There we go. Yeah. So these are the drips that you get from letting it pour over the edge and that's how you also seal your edges. And all you do is the next day or two days or whenever you're ready, or sometimes I just leave them like this one. It's just a design piece. All you do is sand the base, sand them right off, and they just disappear. But you are going to want to make sure you you use do it in a in a place where it makes a lot of dust. And you don't want to yeah, get that plastic do particles in your in your anywhere near your several thousands of dollars worth of audio video equipment. I know I messed that up before. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> now glaze coat is the only product on the market that I know gives you that glass-like finish. And it is water resistant, or actually waterproof, and also heat resistant up to 120 degrees. I use this product from everything from artwork, to countertops, to tabletops, to making exterior concrete um, little things like house signs. If you look on our page, you can see where I took two concrete edgers and put them together and made something pretty cool. So this is my go-to product because I really love that glass-like finish. Now, the reason why people are always intimidated by it is because it does seem difficult because it comes in a part A and a part B. But what I found through going through the different ones is that there's several that you need to use two parts of this one and one part of that one. and you know, stirring, and uh, there was just so much going on that I was like, oh my gosh. And I made so many mistakes that my pieces got ruined. I had scraped off so much. I had sanded off so much. I just had a heck of a time. And what I found was that I always came back to glaze coat. And the reason I always came back to glaze coat is because, as I said earlier, I was a mom who is trying to make ends meet by refinishing furniture in the garage. And I couldn't mess up. If I did mess up, that meant more money out of my pocket in product, and it also meant less, the, the, the longer it's gonna take for me to make a profit and not able to, to uh, post it up for sale. So I started doing all my pieces in this because I wasn't messing up as bad. I was getting less bubbles, I was getting less, um, like this weird wiggly looking lines. I was just, it never not hardened. And that's always a good thing. Because one thing you can do with glaze coat, if you don't want the clear, the super glass like finish, but you want that big thick endurance of having the waterproofing and the 120 degree 
Fahrenheit protection is that you can use your orbital sander on a real high grit and go over it and give it a satin finish. If you ever come to our shop and you see the galaxy table, that's what happened there. It wasn't by design. It was a large um, piece that I had done and I got a couple little squigglies in it and I said, you know what? Well, I'm just gonna make this a satin piece. And that's how I decided that it looked beautiful like that. So I am able to get both a satin finish and a high gloss finish with the glaze coat by just taking the additional step of giving it a light sanding with my orbital two days after it's poured. Five days to be real secure if it's a very large piece because it does take up to five days for, you, for glaze coat to actually set up as hard as glass. So just so you know, I leave it overnight and it's fine to transport and move around and tap your fingers on, but it's an actual five days for it to cure all the way into the pores that it's absorbed into of the wood. Anything else? Uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it, huh? Well, as I said, I wanted a real satin finish. However, this is not going to be a dining room table for me. This is going to be a little, you know, I can imagine having a lamp on one side over here, maybe a little bowl for keys. This would be a wonderful entryway or even a buffet for a kitchen um, or for a dining room. This is the bottom half of a, um, of a china hutch that I have had for a number of years. And I just didn't need a big giant piece. Oh boy, look what I found here. I didn't want a big giant piece. I wanted to turn it into two. I took off the top and I'm gonna turn that into um, a curio cabinet here soon. So we're gonna get started and I'm going to give this um, a, a few coats of just some tongue oil finish. Um, this is bare wood, so I know that it's gonna absorb into it. I sanded it down all the way. Deanna Van Dyke wanted to know, did you have to buff it after sanding it? I'm assuming she's talking about the galaxy table. Uh, you know what? I didn't. I just used, what grit did I use? I used like 220 to get any type of errors out. And then I used, um, I think it was 1,000 grit and just went over it and used that kind of like a buffer. So, yeah, I did. I did buff it. Wow, that took a long time to get there. It did. So it did buff it. I guess it would constitute as uh, that. Oh, and Debbie wants to know, Is she says she's interested in doing a dresser as a bathroom sink. Is the Ooh. sealer water resistant? I would say you use Now, tongue oil finish, it is if you do like 90 coats of it. However, Fama Wood Glaze Coat is um, sealed 100% that way. You know, I'm feeling really guilty. I kind of want to do this and sand it but I would have to tape off the whole bottom. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? No. I can, the good news is this. No. You can always do glaze coat over like, I love me some glaze finish. coat, but I just don't think that that is right for that dresser. Yeah, I don't, see when I use glaze coat, I want that glass finish. On this piece here, I'm just really just wanting a a satin finish. I want it to look old and you know that's what I used to seal the hardware on this piece. Yeah. I'm, with some satin. I'm with you. I just don't what? Do what you're doing. Don't don't no fam old wood. No, no, no. not today. Now no generally you know I love fam old wood. Everybody so loves fam old wood. this this product here I'm just putting on with this is different than tongue oil finish or tongue oil. Now, regular tongue oil, you would put that on and then wipe it off. Put it on and then wipe it off. This is, has like a polyurethane kind of feel to it. Um, but I noticed that it's less likely to bubble. But you still don't want to put it on like all super thick. I saw somebody ask the other day, what did I do wrong when I was um, clear coating this, um, this piece I was working on? And when I looked at it, I saw all these dimples all over it. And there was only one thing that I could imagine. They had done too many coats. They were or too thick of a coat. The best way to get the best results 
with any she, type like of clear of coat. coat. Yeah, she, but she was using like a polyurethane. Oh, I thought she, she was talking about the glaze no, coat. No, glaze coat you just put on one time and it's equal oh. to 70 coats. That's okay. why it gives you that beautiful glass-like finish. So while I have your attention, Diane Longman wants to know, she says, I'm still confused as to which one doesn't yellow. My whole dining room table yellowed. Well, you know, th there is, um, it's very hard to find one that doesn't yellow. And the reason is, is because, especially when it's an oil-based, is because there really just isn't very many oils that aren't yellow naturally. So coconut oil is naturally clear. However, it's not very permanent, I guess you could say. So it's hard, I think, it must be, because this has to be the going thing for many, many years, is that oil-based sealers yellow. The only one that I have had not yellow is glaze coat. Um, but again, that's keeping it out of direct sunlight because glaze coat has no SPF in it. So you need to keep that in mind as well. Cheryl, uh, she just came across this product a couple days ago when I, she was watching all the new stuff at Creativation. Wow. Oh. She's on her way from Vancouver, British Columbia to Bellingham, Washington to go to the buy U.S. from the Joann's there. Oh, really? Well, thank you. <laughs> Oh, you cool? know, I just want you to know we do have um, vendors right there in in um, in Canada. So you guys do have it there. We also have Unicorn Spit available in Australia. We also have Unicorn Spit available in the UK. To find those suppliers, we would like you just to go to unicornspit.com and look under retailers, and you'll find a whole international list. And it's getting ready to go even further. So Global. when I was in when I was in um, Creativation, I actually sat down with a very um, big um, art supplier in India. So I thought that was pretty exciting. I must have missed that one. Uh, Linda, can you overwork the tongue oil finish? Um, no. Yes, you can if you let it dry out and try to go over it. It's smart to just stretch it out as far as you can and try and, and get it out of your mind that it's only going to take two coats. You cannot pile this stuff up. The thinner the coat, the better. So you want to make sure that you just give nice, thin coats. And you want to stretch it out. The best way to overwork it is to go and touch it or try to spread it out or put more on before it is dry. Now, I find that the tongue oil finish, it dries pretty quick. So, you know, it, it takes a few hours. I always feel confident enough to come and put another coat on as long as, you know, your humidity is just right. I mean, there's so many things that can inhibit that it's always just best to be on the safe side with any type of clear coat, including glaze coat, that before you put on a second coat, I like to wait 24 hours. Um, questions, sometimes I'll questions, wait questions. 10 hours if I'm home. Questions? Lots of questions. All right, give it to All me. All right. Can I put water-based poly over tongue oil? Um, tongue oil finish, you can, but I would prefer for you guys to probably do, do a few coats. You know, this here is going to be one coat of tongue oil finish and you can tell where it's being applied i don't know if everybody's able to see this down here well yeah sort of i had to since i have like six things i'm trying to do at once sorry i just put a main the main shot on here all right well let's keep it downward facing well I'm, i wanted to answer questions and well, people would like it whenever you look at them and answer oh, questions no it's okay all so right with this i don't know if you've noticed i don't know how long no, you guys you have not it. seen what i've been doing no they, they, they can okay. see what you're doing so um, if you look at the finish, luckily I have one part here where it hasn't been on yet, but you can see it's chalky looking. It's kind of fogged out looking. That means that it has been treated with the tongue oil finish. So that is really important. A lot of people don't know about this quality of unicorn spit, but it tells you when it's dry and ready to seal.
by turning to that foggy finish, um, which also works great because it gives you a good guide to let you know where you missed a spot. So you know that whenever you go over it and it's not sealed all the way, you know you missed a spot because you'll have an area that's foggy. Now you could use the same thing right over a salve that I have down there if you wanted to give it some additional protection. Um, but yeah, I do recommend doing two coats. Don has a, um, a bookcase in his office that I made a number of years ago that I only did one coat of um, tongue oil finish on. It was one of my very first videos that I did. And uh, it's still good. It, does it seem to have any problems with its, with its? I don't know. It's covered thing? in stuff. Yeah, it is covered in stuff, but it doesn't um, lift. So we got questions. Okay. And I hope I didn't accidentally mute this, but let's carry on. Uh, what are you using right now? Tongue oil, Horns Bees. I am using oil finish is what we're using. Form Bees, Tongue right. Oil Finish. All right, let's see. And it's different than regular tongue oil. Now there are tongue oil and hemp oil, and boiled linseed oil. All those will work, but I'm able to get this one at the local Walmart, and at Nuts and Bolts, Ace Hardware. Um, I noticed that some retailers have stopped carrying it and are carrying Watco. Watco is another form of tongue oil finish, and I tried it, and I don't like it. Um, I find that it just it just floats on top, doesn't want to absorb, and takes forever to 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 cure. Took too long, too long for me. All right. Um, Lori says I was told that if you can find a marine finish for like boats, it doesn't yellow. Well, that's a good thing. I would like to try that. Now, we do have a marine place close by, honey. We should maybe go down there and take a look. Oh, okay. A place called Cabela's? No. It's actually down on, like, Southwest Boulevard. Oh. There's a boat place where they, they fix boats. Uh, let's see. Chris is asking, does anybody know where to find the video of Michelle painting the front? It, You found one through four on YouTube, but the none of her. I thought one through four had us painting the yep. front. They should have all been on there. Um, They're Chris, all there. You can also it's the one that says dripping with, with um, blues and gold or something like dripping dripping with and blues gold. and gold. Um, the other thing you can do, it's also on the Facebook page right here, Michelle and the yes. Decorative Art Studio. So as so you can you should see, be able to find those. I'm brushing side well, to we, side we can, on we can this. See you later. Are they having a downward angle, babe? Yes. All right. Now, as you see, I'm brushing side to side. And as I'm brushing... What that's doing is kind of just working it into the grain of the wood. And it's drying really easy because it is absorbing. And that's what I like about form bees is that it really penetrates. And as you can see, my colors did get deeper than they were. All that's gone. Uh, Cheryl. That feels pretty good to me. Wants to know, where can I buy the vinyl for the stenciling and what is the product you use to make the stencils? Um, I just used basic um, stencil um, paper for, for it. It's called, hold on, let me get you a piece. I used Aura Mask 813, comes in a big roll, super inexpensive, and I'm very glad because it took me almost a whole roll to figure out what the heck I was doing. <laughs> I kind of stunk at it, but I figured it out. Um, and I just used it with my Cricut. And believe it or not, this entire project that you see on here was my very first try trying to design something on the Cricut um, design space, and which makes me feel super proud because I am not a technology kind of person. Like, I run my whole business through my phone and I don't use my computer because it scares me. So, I was pretty surprised that I was able to, to figure out that Cricut space. And if you guys watch, you can see where I tumbled and fell quite a few times trying to get it just right. But 
all in all, I figured it out pretty good. Um, and what I used, um, now this is the stencil put right over unicorn spit. Um, well, this is actually my, I'm, I'm the inventor of unicorn spit. So this is a product that um, Eclectic is not producing yet. It's just one of my newest um, concoctions. So it can't be called unicorn spit yet because Eclectic's not making it. But it's based on the same composition of being a water-based stain and glaze in one. Hence the reason you see I use the same product to paint and the same product to stain and the same product to glaze all in this one piece. Um, so this is my metallic and I've got a real, this is the copper called Apollo. And we're going to have a few other colors come out and it's going to be a matter of time before Eclectic's able to bring those to you, um, to the masses. So we'll have these available, a limited amount available in a short period of time once I get my store up and rolling. It's just taking me a minute. I wanted to finish this piece before I went full Monty in there. There we go. So right now, as you guys are seeing, I kind of contradicted myself whenever I said, you know, you want to wait 24 hours to um, put that second coat on. But as you can see with this, it, there is no humidity in the air whatsoever. Um, it's so bad that my hair is like full of static. So that's how I can always gauge the, um, the humidity, the static electricity. And so as I've been buffing the tongue oil finish into the unicorn spit that is over the, that is over the, um, he made me lose what I was saying. I'm, this is on bare wood. So the unicorn spit is sunk down into the wood. This is like a giant sponge I've been applying this to basically. So that first coat went on and just absorbed right down in it. And I love that. It started getting um, a low gloss look to it and that's whenever I knew that it was enough and I could go over and do another coat just based on the, um, on the look and the feel of the wood. I think it is important to know that there's a big difference between tongue oil and tongue oil finish. Tongue oil finish has a plastic polymer in it, which I'm not fantastically excited about. However, I do really love the results. Now, it is very important for you to remember to keep this away from flame or high heat. That's really starting to look like a... Um like the Constitution or something that was written on vellum. Right? Like 1700 something. Ins. So my goal for this was Pretty to cool. make it look like Treasure I or um, what was it, that movie? National Treasure. National Treasure. With Nicolas Cage. We all know how Don feels about Nicolas Cage. So, so there we go. Now, again, you're going to want to always apply it going with the grain following the grain, meaning that your brush strokes are following the same directions as the tree grew. So you're just going to, if the, if the lines are going vertical, your brush needs to go vertical. That's going to help you avoid um, any brush strokes, no matter what medium you're using. You're going to want to apply following the grain of the wood. Oh, I'm loving this. This is really turning out pretty. As you can see, the grain is still bumping out. It makes it look old and rustic-y. Um, on this piece, I didn't sand it with very fine sandpaper to kind of polish the wood. Um, I did 120 on it and just went to 220 after that in order to avoid having those little squiggle marks that you get from using an orbital if you um, use too high of a... Of a or too low of a grit. You would not want to use like an 80 grit. That'll give you horrible sanding marks um, unless you're looking to strip something. So as you can see, because I only used 220 on it, 
I'm able to see part of the wood grain, which I feel gives it more of a rustic-y look. And that's what I like about using tongue oil finish, is that it really absorbs into the wood and locks it. And it doesn't smear your unicorn spit because it's oil-based, but it's user-friendly. And I really, really like it a lot. It's what I first started using and maybe the way that it works, how I expect it to work because it was the first one I ever used. But I've never had any problems with it and I really like it a lot. And now it's coming in easier um, packaging as well. I like the little plastic ones. We'll also have this available at our store. So this is my three things that I love best for sealing our projects. If I'm going for a beautiful glass-like finish, like you see here, what you know is what my heart is really on. You gotta move the camera again? Okay. Are these, am I talking to? Okay. So um, if you're looking for that beautiful glass-like finish that you gets that real super three-dimensional look like you can put your hand down in it and, and stir up the galaxy if you wanted to. It really plays some wonderful tricks on your eyes, especially when the light shines on it. It's beautiful. That is my glaze coat. Um, glaze coat is the easiest one to use, the least errors. It doesn't turn yellow. It hardens really quick, just overnight, is enough for you to be able to transport it. Um, it's waterproof, it's heat resistant, it's what I use on countertops, art, and furniture alike. This is my absolute favorite. It gives a different result than anything in the world. If you're looking to um, get a more rustic seal, like you see here on the top that I just did, I like tongue oil finish and a low gloss, but they also have a high gloss. I'm just not so into the high gloss. Nowadays, if I want a high gloss, I don't want to do several coats of polyurethane. I'll just do one quick coat of glaze coat, come back in the morning, and it's like 70 coats flawlessly were put on. Are you ready for some questions? I am. All right. Let's start with the, the praise, because I know you like that. Okay. <laughs> It's gorgeous, beautiful piece, Michelle. Wow, this looks like a beautiful antique piece. Amazing. It does? You never cease to amaze me. It's gorgeous. Well, the, who uh, said that? Uh, Sherry Combs Garnett. Well, thank you, Sherry. Uh, let's see. Susan Christmas. That's gorgeous. Uh, thank Christina you. Christina Simbeck. I love it. Thank you, love Christina. Uh, Cheryl. Christina's down at the Pink Daisy, y'all. A lot of it here in Kansas City. And a lot of my artwork is there for sale. So if you're ever in Kansas City and you go down to the West Bottoms, go visit Christina. Uh, she owns the Pink Daisy, and you can see all my artwork on display there as well. Uh, now here's a question. Cheryl Sheath, uh, can you put glaze coat after using the tongue oil finish? Yes, but you're going to want to make sure that it's cured for at least three days. Because as I said, especially if you're applying it onto a porous surface such as bare wood, because as this cures, it's leaching down into the pores. And you just want to make sure that, because the deeper it gets into that pore, the less air it's going to have here. So it's going to take a long time if it cures from the top down. So you're going to want to make sure you give it at least three days to fully cure. Uh, let's see, Stephanie, are you coming to Jump Shop in April? You know, I wish I was. I wish I could go to all the shows. Um, God, I really wish I could because... I know junk thing. No, that, well, I'd take them with me if I could, but I am hoarded out. And I know junk stock has a bunch of junk. And I'm not allowed to take anything home anymore because my attic's full. Speaking of which, if anybody wants to come Speaking to Kansas City of. and rummage through my attic, everything's for sale. <laughs> we got plenty of crap if anybody Tons. wants it. What else do you have, babe? Uh, let's see. I uh, missed the first part. Did you put any other sealer on before the tongue oil? No, and it's very important to remember that this is not pure tongue oil. This is Formby's tongue oil finish. There's a big difference between the two. Uh, let's see, Sherry. I'm coming to Kansas City. I'm coming. Let me start over. I'm hoping to be in the Kansas City area in October. I hope your store is up and running by then. It so will be. We. Good Lord willing. I'll tell you what. Right. Yeah, I'm super uh, let's excited see, Tucson Junksters, it really turned out beautiful. 
Thank you. Jennifer Barnes, I wish I lived closer to you so I could buy some of your pieces. All your stuff is beautiful. It's too bad she won't sell them, Jennifer. Sorry. There's a, just a few pieces at the Pink Daisy that I let go of. Only hmm. a couple. Right. But I don't know. I don't think I can sell this one because it was the first one that I used my metallics on. So. So, um, <laughs> Stephanie, no one knows about Unicorn Spit in Omaha. Really? Yes. Yeah, they do. Isn't that where Spitz is from? Oh, yeah. You need to meet my friend Andrew Spitz. You can find Spitz his page Nagel. at Handy Andy. He is a spitter out there, and he is fantastic. Every He's once in a while, he Omaha. comes to town to see us, and he lives in Omaha. Uh, let's see. Deanna, do you typically cover your pieces while they cure? You know, I don't, and I probably should, because then I'd have less errors, like little doggy hairs and stuff like that. So when I was home and working in the garage, it was a very chaotic environment. I had the kids opening and closing the garage doors all the time, riding their bicycles, so I did tent them. Um, here at my shop, that's why I have the shop now, is so that I can separate work from home, which is wonderful for me. Um, and me. Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't have to tent any longer. But I'm going to tell you what, whenever it comes to doing the glaze coat, I always tent no matter what environment I'm in because I'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, let's see. Do you do any shows on the Pacific Coast in Canada? I know you're going to Toronto in May. Is there something you yes, want to tell me about? Yes, I do want to tell you about that. Um, they're having uh, Pinterest is having a big thing in Canada, and I said I might be looking at maybe taking a little vacation up there. When were you maybe. planning on telling me this? Well, I, I, I thought I did. I thought the girls told you when we were in California. I was not in California. Or in Arizona. Oh, well. We might go, so I didn't put anything in stone yet. We got a lot of trips going on this year. You, oh, my gosh, it's ridiculous. You may have to get another job. I might. Who? You. Another job? Yeah. Well, or maybe I have to get a job, but <laughs> if you want to go on all these places. Well, I want to go everywhere. Just like I said, I want to go to all the different things. But I was asked by Pinterest Canada to do a live demonstration there and to work with um, a Canadian distributor and wow. maybe do something, but nothing was set in stone. Nothing was said to Dawn at all. No, not yet because it was just up in the air whim of a How thought. do people that just found out about Unicorn because Spit three I days ago. Because I that I'm thinking about it. She just found Unicorn Spit last week. I know. And she already knows that you're <laughs> supposed to be in Toronto. I've known you for four years, five years. Okay, let's move on to the next question, Don. All right. <laughs> uh, we're not going to Philadelphia either, or are we? I don't know. I really like Philadelphia cheesesteaks. What about the... Are, do Kristen's we have a, been offering that if we come, she'll give us sandwiches. Uh, let's see. Are we going to the UK? Did you tell me? No. no. I All want right. to. I had an offer to go to Barbaria, but I have my kids that same weekend. For like an extended trip because my ex-husband's going out of town. Uh, What's next? I'm from upstate Michigan. And people look at me like I'm crazy whenever I say what I use. Well, you should see what LA. people say to me when I tell people I invented spit. They all go like this. And you see them swallow. It's so funny. But I didn't invent that kind of spit. It's already absorbed in there. All the shine is gone. I'm going to give myself another quick coat. Just a little bit. Takes about two teaspoons will give you a coat. So I'm going to get that on real quick. While we were sitting, that wood was very dry and very old. So the older the wood, the more moisture it has lost. So the quicker it will absorb your penetrating oils, such as the tongue oil finish. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to give it another coat here. Again, really thin coats. And notice there's no bubbles. And then it's easy for you to be able to pick your little hairs out of it. So I like that. That's what you see me doing there is grabbing the hairs with my brush and then flicking them off on my apron. <laughs> I'm a dork. And then I just run my brush until it's dry. Are there any more questions, babe? Yeah, I had missed a question is here. Is it pointing when I was down? Going on my rant. It's down enough. 
Uh, let's see. I have a vintage table with leaves that hang down and cannot be removed. How would you put glaze coat on something with two halves that need to be moved? Well, the kitchen table that I have up front, the galaxy table, is also has a middle leaf and two sides. So what I do with those is I tape off. Well, no, she has the, they're the um, hang down. Oh, the, the, the gate. The wings. The gate, the wings. Yeah, um, they I, can't be removed. I took them apart. Oh, they should be able to unhinge. If you look, they have a hinge. And what you'll have to do, unless they're like, you know, super duper close where they rub against each other, you cannot use glaze coat on that. So I did do one that was, um, it wasn't a rounded um, pieces that went together. Like if they're rounded like a cup and they rotate on each other kind of like an elbow, then you cannot use glaze coat on that. But if you can yeah. get a nice straight line when you take the um, hinges off, you'll be able to do that and glaze coat it. Take it off the hinges, glaze coat it, and put it back together as long as it's two squares that butt up to each other. But if it's two circles to use, you can't do it. So sorry. I wish it would work on everything like that, but it's just too thick, and it'll inhibit its ability to swing. See, Kara asked, did she finish her top three? I missed the last one. The top, top three? Maybe I should... Think these through before I ask the questions. I don't know. Top three, what, Kara? What were you asking? Yeah, Debbie, it doesn't sound like you're going to be able to do that with the glaze coat. No, not if it's got the rounded. Unless hinge. you can figure out how to pull them apart. Yeah, but know. even if she can pull them apart, if they rub against each other. Oh, yeah, that's like, true. Like, um, let me see. Hold on. I don't want to stop what I'm doing right here because I see a spot. Hold on. I'm going to show you kind of what I'm thinking it shaped like. Using oh, them. your top three favorite sealers. Oh, yes. I didn't get to finish them because I got interrupted with um, Dawn's rant about Canada. Sorry, everybody. Dawn is going to... I'm thinking that would be a big deal. It might be... It wasn't a big deal because we're not... I don't know if we're going. Well... I haven't made any steps towards it. Obviously. Step no. one, ask Dawn. Oh, honey, I know better than to ask you. It's always better to ask forgiveness than it is permission. Really? I saw a $7,000 rifle at the gun shop the other day. I'll and be I back said, later. No. I didn't ask you for it. <laughs> no. Well, the day that we can afford a $7,000 gun is the day that I won't be doing arts and crafts anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If <laughs> you're rich. Uh, All right, let's, let's see. see Pam is asking, with the famo wood, do you really need to mix all of it at the same time? Yeah, no. no. You pour off what just you just need. Just mix as much as you want. So that's a good question, and I think that's a really, really awesome thing to know. Okay, so I got that on. It looks pretty even to me. All right, so as you see, this is um, one size of glaze coat. This is the pint, and a pint covers four and a half square feet. This one's a quart, and a quart covers nine square feet. These big boys here are gallons, and they cover, oh gosh, like 20 square feet. So, so size again just Okay, so this is a pint, and it covers four and a half to five feet. Five feet for an experienced person, four for an unexperienced person. Because you always want to make a little bit more than you think you're going to need because you want it to drip over the edges. Stretching it out will give you bad results. So you just want to make more than you think you'll need. So the pint's going to give you four square feet to five square feet. The quart, or the pint's going to give you that. The quart is going to give you um, nine to ten square feet. And then you're looking at the gallon that's going to give you like... 20 to 30 square feet, I guess, right? Let me look at this. 36 square feet. So the, the, the gallon size will give you 36 square feet. Now, of course, you pay for packaging. So the larger the, the size you buy, the more ounces you get per dollar. Very important to know. 
And all you have to do is get familiar with what a quart looks like, what a pint looks like. That way you can start gauging. Um, I always suggest starting off small and moving on to a large project. A quart of milk, a pint of whiskey, a gallon of orange juice. Or milk. Who would already, think of orange juice instead of milk? Because I already used milk. <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, yeah. A, what is it? A pint of... Whiskey. A quart. A quart of milk. Yeah. And a gallon of orange juice. There you go. A loaf of bread, a bottle of milk, and a stick of butter. That's right. Keep going. Don't forget to, what to get your mom. Oh, I think after <laughs> 35 years of right? hearing that, I've got it memorized. Hmm. So you just want to keep going um, with getting the right size and figuring it out. I'm just fanning this just to make sure that I don't have any areas that are thicker or thinner than others. I noticed them. So as you can see, as this is drying, it's not drying to a high gloss finish. Form these is going to give you a nice satin finish. Super easy to apply. Now, it does have a scent, so, you know, it's not an overwhelming scent to me because I don't find that I'm very sensitive. But again, it's not bad to me, and I'm very sensitive to that stuff. Yeah, but you still want to it's make sure that if, if, if that you have an escape route, if, if you find yourself to be, make sure that you're able to open a window and leave the room if you're using that, just in case it tends to give you some problems. Some people are more um, susceptible to well, respiratory Well, generally uh, speaking, these thing, a lot of the stuff that you use when we don't have the doors open bothers me. It does. It makes gives me itchy eyes or runny nose or something, but this stuff, not, not so much. Yeah, like that. Do you remember I got that one Zinzer? Zinzer, I think it was. What? Lacquer or shellac. Was that the one that you did this? Yeah, and the, it stunk. Uh, we did it I all the way on the other side of the building. I was four days. Which is four buildings down. It's all in one place, but there's like walls in between for the different businesses. We ended up having to evacuate the entire building. That stuff was it, horrifying. It was awful. I it literally was, was, I mean, I was sick, literally sick I for know. days. I'm so sorry. I it's almost not your killed fault. everyone. I almost killed them all. There's a little hair. All right. So that's one thing that you're going to want to remember to look for whenever you're doing um, clear coat with these little cheapy brushes is to look for the little hairs. And you're also going to want to pull the hairs out before you get started. You know what? Is that what I think it is? Let me look at this. Oh, good, it's not. I thought I had forgotten um, a piece of stencil vinyl down. Oh my gosh, that would have been terrible. I almost did over here on this horse before we started. I didn't realize I hadn't pulled that piece off. So there we go, guys. This is going to be sealed enough um, for for... It to be safe, however, I am going to come back probably tomorrow and do the whole process over again of doing these three really light coats if it needs three. It'll, you'll be able to tell when it's done because the grain of the wood will gradually just become less noticeable and less noticeable because the polymers that are in this tongue oil finish are going to fill in those grooves eventually. Um, again, it's waterlocked right now. Um, water resistant i wouldn't say waterproof um but yeah this so far it's pretty good so this definitely would be great for a dining room or anything like that and again um you're also able to use your waxes Carol um, says it looks like leather it does look like leather it's really beautiful i wish you could see it from here it looks real oil rubbed if you know what that means um what what would be a good example of oil rubbed it looks like somebody oil rubbed it all into the wood grain there. And that's pretty much what I did, but I just applied it with that and not a cloth. Boy, this piece is really beautiful. I think that swishing with the brush yesterday really, really nailed it. All right, guys. Well, again, if you have any questions, be sure to um, let me know because I'm always here to answer. But just a real quick recap on everything. Um, exterior and shoes, things that aren't going to go through the dish or through the washing machine when it comes to cloth and canvas that is like 
wearable, movable kind of stuff. You just want to use like a never wet sealer um, or Scotch Guard 2. I find it's working great. When it comes to getting a real high gloss finish on a, on a glass, um, I do like to use the, the spray lacquer. When I want a satin, rustic-y, um, not high gloss, very oil rubbed looking finish that's low luster, I like to use tongue oil finish in the low gloss. To me, that's low luster. I really like it a lot. Um, when it comes to exterior sealing, you definitely want to use something that has a, um, a sun protectant in it and a rain and moisture protectant and something that also deals well with temperature change. And that's where I like to use the spar urethane. Um, if you want to go high gloss, you can even use fast drying polyurethane. They have a high gloss, a low gloss, and a satin as well. Um, I just find they, they yellow real bad. They're very, very yellow. Um, again, you can always seal it with any of your waxes. Again, you're going to want to make sure you do multiple, multiple coats of wax on a top because um, it'll absorb, it'll absorb, it'll absorb, it'll absorb, especially if you're using like a hemp oil or um, one of those types of waxes. It's going to absorb and eventually you're going to have to cure it, kind of like you would a cast iron pan. Um, if you want to take your unicorn spit and take it from being these bright rainbow colors and make them more earthy and more neutral and tone them down a bit, never be afraid to, to seal your, um, your designs with a tinted stain and sealer in one. Just gauge it, one coat, see if you like it. Test another spot to see if it's another coat because the more coats you do, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a tinted nail polish. The more coats you do, the darker the tint's going to get. So that's a, a fun thing. Um, and then if you just want to do the three-dimensional effect and really make it look like a piece of glass melted over your piece, I absolutely love that, especially for anything modern or anything you want to make look like stone or anything that you know that's going to take a lot of moisture abuse, such as like a countertop in the bathroom. Um, or if you just wanted to do a beautiful, beautiful top on a dresser or any piece of furniture, you can always use my favorite, which is my glaze coat, and that's one pour that's equal to 70 coats of crystal clear, um, like lacquer or shellac. It's equal to 70 of them. I absolutely love it. Let's see. Um, again, for exterior, I'm not liking this very much, Thompson's. Um, never use polyacrylic as your first thing on unicorn spit because the water in the polyacrylic will moisturize and add water back into your spit and spoil your entire project. Lots of people have been doing a clear coat of um, spray paint first, spray clear, and then doing this, but I, I haven't had the guts to do it. Um, but whenever it comes to sealing metal, you can always use this one here. This is the Ultra Cover Matte Clear, absolutely no yellowing. And then also the Rust-Oleum, if you want a high gloss, that's what I use here. Um, but that's it. But these two babies right here and the wax are my favorite things to use with, with Unicorn Spit. So. That's it. I'm super excited that this piece is done. Um, I, of course, will be taking it outside probably tomorrow and getting some really beautiful, well-staged <laughs> pictures of it. So Lord knows I need to get better at my staging. <laughs> and uh, I'm really excited to be able to show it off to everybody. I'm super proud of my ability to be able to think out of the box and create metallics that are um, really user friendly. Um, they'll dry in your brushes and it won't hurt them. There's no plastics in them that harden. You've got the same um, abilities as you do with regular unicorn spit. If you make a mistake, even if it's four or five days later, if you haven't sealed it, just take a little water and fix it. Or just wash the whole thing off and start again. No need to sand. So 
I'm very excited. And if you guys are interested in watching the rest of the series, we have episodes one through seven. Today would be eight. And thank God it's over until we're going to show it off. You can find it on YouTube where it'll play for you um, chronologically, or you could just filter through the page and watch them one by one. And until next time, you guys, make sure that you always be good and you always be blessed. And most importantly, always let your creative juices flow. Goodbye.